my area of research uh, in a technical language is microfluidics and nanofluidics but all what it essentially means is that you know flow of liquids or maybe gases through very small channels tiny channels and it is very very fascinating and very much different from you know how the same liquid or gas would flow through maybe large pipes and all so to understand uh, you know the phenomenon maybe the physics what is going on and use that understanding to make engineering devices to solve real life problems that is what is more or less what is my broad area of research in fluid dynamics we learn you know how say water flows through big pipes and the way it influences the flow in a larger larger scale system that is more or less well known but in a small scale system people tended to believe that it was known but we found a lot of very very exciting you know different things so if we have a rough channel so what is expected is that it will it will exert more friction against the flow so what we found is that in some cases that roughness instead of uh, you know putting friction more friction it is actually facilitating the water to flow you know fast although we are pumping liquid water actually liquid water is not there on the surface what is happening is that at extreme you know this confinement it was creating something which in physics we call as phase separation for example some gas was there dissolved gas was there so that gas will be there on the surface and the water will be separated from that so and in some cases you see a layer of you know tiny bubbles nano bubbles so what happens is that you have say a, a channel uh, no, at the wall you have maybe uh, say 20 nanometer you know, so small you know, a layer of bubbles so when the liquid water is flowing it is actually not facing the rough walls at our home we have a water supply system so we have a pump and you know the pump pumps the water from the reservoir underground to the uh, top level now in a small imagine that you have a small chip in which you know you have to pump water from here and there for doing some work and for that you cannot have you know such a pump and even if you have a pump because the channel is so narrow your pumping power required will be huge so one of the you know forms of energy which is always available is the energy of the surface so you know uh, the classical example is that you have you know tall trees or plants now you see the water being sucked you know to the topmost uh, you know, branches how does it go uh, you do not have a pump that is you know pumping it so it's all what we understand as capillary action you know that physics is such that it can pump it to a great height either it can rise or fall depending on whether the surface is hydrophilic or hydrophobic again this is well known but the thing is that you know there are always additional complexities what are the complexities you know you may in reality you will not just have one channel you know imagine paper as a material so you will see that if you see in a microscope you will see very you know small small pores here and there connected by fibers so all what it means is they don't have such a single pore you have large number of pores they are you know in a very you know complex network structure they are connected so you really do not know you know how to control the entire movement by capillary action so sometimes what we do is that we try to use other effects now what are the other effects i mean you can use so many like electric magnetic optical so we can use electric field the advantage is that you don't have any mechanical part any friction you do not have pump simply by you you know using electrical voltage you can manipulate the flow be it a droplet be it a you know, continuous flow nowadays doctors will hardly you know move with their procedure or decision without diagnostic test and here lies the challenge wherever you have you know resourced labs by labs i mean diagnostic labs or you know health centers whatever you know there many tests can be done and 
you have excellent uh, you know technologies to do many tests, but the technologies are not accessible. So, some of the solutions that we have developed the whole you know philosophy is that to bring those you know high end tests to the ambit of the use of common people. I had to make them extreme point of care. That means, at extreme harsh conditions where there is no lab, where there is no controlled environment forget about lab, where there is no refrigeration, where there is no power and where there is no trained technician to run the test. Can I still do a nearly same thing what I can do in the lab be it for testing of blood, saliva, so up for any you know infectious or you know any other disease can we do that. You know it is a it is a mindset change altogether because then what you have to do is to make extreme adaptations of your technology keeping in view not just the technical things, but also you know society, economics, user friendliness um, and you know so many things uh, you know business, you know commercialization aspects, public health, government policy, government focus, mission and the need of the people. do not have a, even a threshold uh, number of young researchers in this field in India. And again the challenge is our mindset right you know say somebody has come from mechanical engineering when I say that you know what is that you want to work on. They will invariably talk about something which they have you know learnt as a, as a traditionally uh, you know, respected topic in that subject. For example, computational fluid dynamics in the fluid dynamics. Now, if I say that you know, are you interested to understand how the red blood cell adapts it in a narrow capillary? He says no, 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 no. This is you know blood is something which is it's biology. I don't want to do. And uh, you know, in a way, you know, sometimes see we are very you know as naturally we are critics. We criticize them, but we have to understand. Say now, if he you know learns this subject, when he goes you know for his career career making, people will consider him as a hybrid. And in the western world you know they are taken as you know they are looked after. In our system what happens is that you know this person will find a struggle in getting a job. You know they will oh you are undergraduate in this, postgraduate in this, PhD in this. So, who are you? You know this kind of you know that identity crisis will come. So, that is there but you know if that mindset you know that barrier is crossed you have you can do wonders in the field. Infosys prize you know uh, I would say you know it has been a dream come true if I say in very you know, one sentence. The era in which I you know grew as a young faculty member you know I heard that you know there is an Infosys prize introduced and you know one of our you know role models in Indian academics you know, Professor Ashutosh Sharma you know who has later on you know become very very big in his research you know. You yeah, know, perhaps he was one of the early winners of this. Now that was a time when we were, you know, we either young assistant professors and all. I said, "Whoa! I mean, this is what is fabulous." Then, and I found, you know, great, you know, people, you know, names of Nobel laureates, you know, field medal winners, this and that. And then, if you feel that your name is even associated with the same brand, you feel that perhaps you have got more than, you know, what you were due for. To me, it it will, you know, drive me to do more you know impactful research. You know to my conscience I know that you know these are the things that you know I could have done in a better way and you know I should give you know more drive. This prize you know really you know intensifies my passion.